All right, hello everyone. Um, I'm sure I just saw you in class, but uh, welcome back from break again. I'm, I'm actually doing this video uh, during finals week. So it's kind of weird timing. Anyway, um, we were in the middle of chapter eight and we just hopefully did some review in class. Um, I'm gonna call this section 83C. It kind of goes along with 83A and 83B, which were revolving and making three dimensional shapes and finding the volume, which um, we hopefully just reviewed in class. So uh, this is called volumes by slicing or cross sections. This is um, finding the volume of shape again, but these shapes are gonna be formed in a little different way than the shapes we just did in the other sections where we were taking a rectangle and revolving it and then finding the volume of that rectangle and then adding them all up. We're gonna find the volume of the shape this time and add them all up, but it won't be rectangles this time. Um, so you'll see what it is. So. This says, if a plane intersects a solid, you get what are called cross sections. I would draw you a picture of that, but I hope you can handle that. Um, what we're going to do is find the volumes of shapes where all the cross sections are the same. So what we're going to do, basically, this says uh, volume equals the integral of the area of x. So what we're going to do is find the area of one cross section. Maybe it's a square, maybe it's a circle, maybe it's a triangle. We're going to do one shape that you know that you're familiar with here in just a second, and then we're going to do these kind of weird made up shapes. But what you do is you find the area of one of the cross sections, and then you just integrate them from wherever you are to wherever you're going, and that integral adds them all up. All right, so um, it'll make a lot more sense once we do it. So um, we're going to take a shape that you're familiar with. We're going to take a right uh, pyramid, uh, square base pyramid. So the square base has length A and the um, height of this pyramid is H. What we're going to do is try to find a volume formula. We already know the volume formula. I hope you remember this volume formula. I'll write it down in case you don't. It's volume equals one third times the area of the base times the height. That's the general pyramid formula for this one. It's uh, one third the area of the base is going to be a right so a squared times the height, so this is what uh, we're looking for ultimately. So notice this shape is made up of a bunch of squares if you take cross sections uh, squares all the way from the bottom all the way to the top you're going to get squares the squares are going to get smaller, the closer you get to the point of the pyramid bigger, the closer you get to the base of the pyramid. Um, so I drew this pyramid in a place where we could work with it. I drew it on the x-axis, so it's hard to vis visualize. Sorry, my picture might be quite horrible. But the x-axis actually goes right through the center of the base of this uh, right pyramid. Okay, it goes, the height is from the top, of course, right down to the center. It's hard to visualize that. That's the x-axis in this problem. So what we need to do in all of these problems is generalize. We're just going to find the area of that little green. I drew in one green cross section. It's a square. Uh, just the way I would draw in one rectangle in my other problems, right? But it's not a rectangle, this time it's a square. Um, and then we're going to find the area of that square, that one square, and then we're going to integrate. So what I did here, I need to get some uh, variables. Um, so I drew a little uh, similar triangle issue. I need to relate H and A and X and Y, basically. So that square can move, right? So if you envision it moving, the closer it gets to the X, to the Y axis, the smaller that square gets. So this little distance, I'm going to use my little laser here, right here, is going to be x. It's moving. It's x, right? So that's this. So what you see is this is the height of that pyramid right here, going from the center, the tip, to the center of the base. That's h. This little distance right here is x, which makes that y. Yeah. Okay. And then the um, this side of that little right triangle is half the base. Uh, bases A, remember, goes right through the middle, right? So it's only the half, so it's A over 2. So I now have a relationship between X, Y, H, and A over 2. Normally we'll have other numbers. This is a more general one. Um, so each cross section is a square. So here's my little right triangle, or no, my right triangle, or it is right triangle, I guess. So my similarity statement, X over H equals Y over A over 2. Hopefully you remember some similar triangle stuff. Uh, I solve that for Y, I get A, X over 2, H. So what I'm going to do uh, is find the volume or the area of one of those squares. So envision that square, that little green square. Uh, remember I said that this was the, whoa, whoops, the eraser there is bad. Sorry about that. Let's redraw that. This little height here is y, which is that right there, which is half of the length of that square. So the length of the square is 2y. So the area of the square then becomes 2y squared. Just 
the distance, right? It's y. It's going from the x-axis up, the x-axis down. It's centered on that x-axis, so the height of that is 2y. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to integrate that 2y. Okay? Um, the width of that square is just like the width of a rectangle. It's dx. Okay? And I'm going to integrate from here, which is 0, all the way to here, which is h. Right? So we're going to integrate from 0 to h. Notice there's a little disconnect, though. we got y's and x's. This is always going to happen because my cross-sections are perpendicular to a certain axis. So once I draw them perpendicular, if you think about my square, whatever shape it's going to be, in this case, it's a square, all right? But when you draw it, it's perpendicular. It has a little tiny bit of thickness, just like our rectangles did. That's the dx or the dy. But if I, if it's, if my thickness is this way, like dx, and then the height's going to be y, right? So it's going to be always disconnected. So we need a relationship between it, between y and x, which we have right there. So I'm just going to plug that in, all right? So we're going to uh, come down here to the next step. All right, so all I'm doing right now is plugging in my ax over 2h and squaring it. So um, I wind up with a squared x squared um, over 4h squared times 4. All right, the 4 is the 2, is the two squared now. Yeah? 2 squared is that 4. All right, uh, and then I'm going to simplify it, and now I'm going to integrate it. All right, so just simplify it all. So remember, x is my variable, right? x, dx, x, dx, a and h are just constants. So I'm going to integrate this. I'm going to integrate it fast, so you're not watching too long, because we know how to integrate, I hope. So the a squared over h squared is a constant. I'm going to integrate the x, which is x cubed over 3. I'm going to integrate this thing from 0 to h. I'm going to plug in. Remember, it's going in for my uh, x, right? h cubed over 3 minus 0. I do a little simplifying, we get uh, one third a squared h. Yeah. Go back to the beginning, there it is. All right, so I'm going to do an example. So there's not very many shapes in our real world that are formed this way. Uh, spheres are, spheres are circles, uh, cones, or cones are, you know, circles, very similar. But so we kind of make up shapes. So here's the type of problem you're going to see. It's just kind of a made-up shape. They're really hard to draw. I wouldn't really even expect that you draw them. Uh, but here it is. We have a solid that's going to be formed. Uh, the base of this solid is the circle x squared plus y squared equals a squared. So you see we draw a little picture of that. Um, and then every uh, cross-section perpendicular to the x-axis is an equilateral triangle. And the base of the equilateral triangle is in that xy plane. So this is like that base right here of the equilateral triangle. This is what we're always going to give you. We're going to give you the base. It's going to be in the shape, whatever shape it might be. The shape in the, x, in the plane could be anything. In this case, it's a circle. I don't even know what the shape is. Don't worry about what it is, what it looks like. Kind of looks like half a football maybe or half a cone. But it's not really a cone because of the way the shape's formed. Um, but we're going to give you the cross-sectional shape. So there is the cross-sectional shape, right? So it's an equilateral triangle. The cross-sectional shape could be any shape, and then you just need the formula for that shape, right? So the area of an equilateral triangle, you may remember, is S squared root 3 over 4. You may not remember that. It's a good thing to remember. You could also do a little trigonometry, right, triangle trigonometry. So we're just trying to find the area of one of those um, equilateral triangles. Again, the closer I put this thing to the origin, the bigger it gets. The closer it moves out to the side, the smaller it gets, right? So this height right there is going to be y. That's also y, okay? It's really negative y, but it's y, same distance, but I'm just going to call this y. So the length of that base of the equilateral triangle is going to be 2y. So the area of the equilateral triangle will be side squared, but that side is 2 squared. 2y squared times root 3 over 4. We do a little simplifying here. That's a 4y squared over 4. So it just becomes y squared root 3. That's the area of one of those triangles. So what we're going to do now is integrate the area of one of those triangles. Now remember this triangle has some thickness, a little tiny bit of thickness. It's dx because it's perpendicular to the x-axis. So again, notice I have that same disconnect we talked about before. I have my a y in there with an x in there. It's going to be always disconnected. So you have to solve that variable for x since it's dx in essence. And I'm going to integrate. It's a circle. So I'm going to go from negative a to a. I'm not actually going to do the integration at the end. I'm just going to let you do that. I'm just going to set it up for you. 
So the last thing to do is uh, solve for y. I don't even have to solve for y, I can solve for y squared because notice my equation is x squared plus y squared equals a squared. I have a relationship between x and y. So y squared is a squared minus x squared. So I plug this in. I'm gonna just factor out that root three if that's okay. And then my y squared is a squared minus x squared. Just remember when you integrate, I'm gonna stop here. Uh, the rest is just the integration, but you need to do the integration. The answer needs to be done. Yeah, but I'm just going to save some time here. Just remember that a squared is a constant. So maybe I'll just go one more step just so we don't mess it up. So it would be a squared x because it's a constant, not a cubed over 3. a is a constant. x is the variable minus x cubed over 3. And we're going from negative a to a. You can also use symmetry. You can go 0 to a and go twice. Um, but I'll let you finish that up because there's another video coming right after this also. I gave you just a couple problems on this. It's kind of a small idea. but um, Yep, that's it on this one. Uh, there's another one coming.